me just tell you a little bit about my, my new book, Jump the Curve, and it's about emerging technologies. And uh, Albert Einstein once said to, to scientists and to, to technology writers, he said, if you can't explain what you're working on to an eight-year-old child, you're either a fraud or a charlatan. And I thought to myself, well, this is a, that's a really good test. I have an eight-year-old daughter and a six-year-old son. And I wanted to see if they could understand what I was trying to convey in my new book, Jump the Curve. And so I, uh, this is a picture of my son, Sean. He's six years old. And uh, he hasn't lost any of his teeth yet. And this is a matter of some consternation to him. But I said to him, what would you rather have from the tooth fairy? Would you rather have a dollar for every tooth that you lose, and all babies have 20 teeth, or would you rather have a penny for the first tooth, two pennies for the second, double it, so that at the end of, and uh, he knows his dad is kind of uh, a tricky guy, and he goes, I'm going to take the penny doubling. And I go, smart boy, Sean. I go, now, what if the tooth fairy gave you $5 a tooth? I was really careful to say, I'm not saying the tooth fairy will give you $5. I'm just saying, what if? Well, he's really good at math, and he does it. He goes, $100. He goes, I'm taking that. And I go, no, Sean. You've got to learn how to jump the curve because at the end, that 20th tooth is worth $5,242.88. That's what I mean by jumping the curve. Most people tend to think that growth is just flat, it's linearly. But those things that are growing exponential, they begin shooting up on a curve. And that's what I mean by jumping the curve. There are now nine forces in society that are doubling every six to 18 months. Semiconductors, computers, bandwidth, robotics, all of these things are doubling. And here's a really interesting thing about exponential growth. Anything that doubles, 10 times, at the end of the 10th doubling, it goes, it is 1,000 times bigger. Writing this book, I thought, well, I'm going to put exponential growth into Google. And of course, the first entry that pops up, a Wikipedia entry. And they have this strange word on there, zenzizenzizenzek. And I go, well, what is that? I go, that's too cool not to sort of click on it and find out what it is. And you know what it is? It is 2 to the 8th power, anything that doubles eight times. And I thought, as I'm writing my book, that's exactly the theme that I'm trying to convey to people. Because in the next decade, there are going to be all of these forces that double at least eight times in the next decade. And this is what we have to start preparing for. Here's what all of us have to do, that there are a number of technologies Again, that are going to increase a thousandfold in the next decade. Robotics, RFID technology, something called rapid prototype manufacturing. And if you want to prepare for the future, you can't just look at where we are today. You have to see where we're headed in the future. People always say, oh, healthcare costs are going to continue to skyrocket into the near future. I don't see that at all. I think we're finally going to start seeing plummeting healthcare costs. And the reason that is, is this bottom picture. A big gray mass, it's a human hair. But that little computer chip is how small we're making computer chips today. And IBM, Intel, and others are saying, you know what? We're now making these things so small, so good, that where, you know where we see the future of the computer industry? It's not in the laptop. It's not in your cell phone. It's inside you. To jump the curve and sort of think where all of this is going, some of you might have seen this report last November. There was a, a robotics contest, 10 cars, no human involved, safely navigated in urban environment, no accidents. They were so good, they qualified for the California driver's license. Um, maybe that doesn't say too much given uh, you know, California teenagers, but my point is robotic technology only going to get better and better and better. And while you're probably not likely to turn over your car to a robot anytime soon, the military is already starting to do it. They're tired of risking our soldiers' lives over in Iraq. And so if they can have a robot drive these convoys, are they going to do it? Absolutely. I really want to just focus on what I, a couple of strategies that are outlined in my book, how to think about 
all of this change. And, and what I want all of you to do is sort of encourage what I call it become an exponential executive. Stop thinking linearly and start thinking exponentially. Um, so my first lesson is think small, but then think big. All of these technologies I've talked about, uh, nanotechnology, robotics, RFID, they're kind of small today, but they're going to grow. And solar energy is a perfect example. Today we get less than one-tenth of 1% 1 of our energy from solar. And so a lot of people in the utility and energy industry always throw that right back at me. And they say, Pfft. you know, we've been talking about solar since Jimmy Carter was president, and today we get less than one-tenth of 1% 1 of our energy from solar. And I go, you're absolutely right. But you have to jump the curve, and you have to start thinking exponentially. And I, I now want you to sort of think exponentially backwards. And here's the, here's the example I want to give to you. Um, Picture a lake, Mille Lacs Lake, any uh, lake, and, and then picture a single lily pad. And say that lily pad doubles for 30 days, for an entire month, so that at the end of the month, the whole lake would be covered. Maybe milfoil is a better example, but you know, my, my point is just sort of picture this whole lake being covered. By day 20, so two-thirds of the way through this doubling exercise, how much of the lake do you think would be covered? And I asked my wife this, and she goes, oh, I don't know, 5 10%. I go, no, honey, one-tenth of one percent. And she goes, no way. And I go, yes way. I go, but here's what happens. In the next 10 days, it goes from one-tenth of one percent to 100 percent. Day 25, through that doubling, we're only at 3 percent. Day 28, it grows to about 25 percent. Day 29 would be 50, and then day 30, 100. A lot of people don't believe the math, but here it is. We go from one-tenth at day 20 to 100%. My point being, all of these technologies I've been telling you about, robotics, RFID, computers, all of them have been doubling for the last 20 proverbial years. But just because you don't see them doesn't mean they're not going to continue to grow exponentially. Many of them, in fact, are. So the really big change is still ahead of us. Which is what I call diversity. I mean, if you look at your group, my guess is the people are very, very similar to you. But what I have up here is a picture of the African savanna, and I think it's, uh, I, I tend to speak in metaphors because I think they do a much better job of conveying how we have to think about it. In order to survive, um, wildebeests, ostriches, and zebras all hang out together. And you know why that is? Is wildebeests have really good hearing uh, zebras have a good sense of sight, and the other smell really good. So together, all three of them bring a different skill set, and they can sort of sense threats to them. My point with this is you've got to get, you've got to reach out, and you have to have more diverse people in your inner circle, people who think differently than you, because they're going to be the ones who see these opportunities or these threats Or The future is moving so fast that a lot of us, are going to have to unlearn a lot of things that we know. Here's the best example I can think. How many of you are, are golfers? Well, uh, about 10 years ago, Tiger Woods just destroyed the Masters competition. He won by 12 strokes. But after that, he said something absolutely amazing. He's at the top of his game. Uh, he said, my swing sucks. Can you imagine that? I mean. I, I'm not much of a, a golfer, but I wish my swing sucked as, as much as uh, his did. Uh, but what he said is, I can be even better. But in order to be even better, I have to unlearn some of the things that I'm doing, even though I'm doing them pretty good. I can be even better.